As I've said a while ago, we are um, in a in a series entitled Every Tribe, Every Nation. And I believe if you've been part of this church, it's a very familiar four words, no? Every Tribe, Every Nation. We actually composed a song for that. And it it's entitled Tribes. No? I, I, I guess you've sang that once in your life. And the lyrics goes, Every tribe we will see your glory, every nation bow before you. It's really a picture of what will happen in the end. And I came across Revelation chapter 7, verse 9, and it's really a picture of what will happen when we see the glory of Jesus once again. And I'd like to read that. It's two verses. It says, After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude that no one could number, from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. It's a picture of people worshiping God regardless from where you are, your race, wherever you've been, your roots. It's a picture of the goodness of God in the end. And I believe that's the reason why we celebrate His goodness because we know that there is the hope of that future. But even as we anticipate the coming of the Lord, as we are still here, there's still work to be done. And so that's why as a church, Victory has been established or it has been started by missionaries coming to visit us in 1984. If you've been, uh, I guess, a lot of you were not yet born at that age, no? 1980. Sino yung mga 1984 forward? Tama ba yung English ko? Meron ba? Babata, no? Sino yung 1905? Nandito na, no? Yung parang kinukuha na tayo ng lupa pero faithful si Lord, no? And I know, <laughs> I feel that way sometimes. No? But in the beginning, there were Americans who visited this nation and decided to plant a church in New Belt. And ever since that time, we already held on to that, no? That we are planted from another nation and now we have been sending people to other nations. That's who, re who we really are. And I I'd like you to see a picture of this map. And as of today, because we are a mission sending church, guess what? We are already in 38 nations that were planted from the Philippines. Grabe, no? Praise God. Parang sobrang excited nyo, no? Yung palakpak nyo. Parang... Okay, 38 lang. No? Parang ganon. But there's so much work to be done. And this is something that I'm really excited about. There is 196. Imagine that. Filipino missionaries. And uh, three of them are actually here. I'd like to ask them to stand. Yeah. Juliet, who actually exhorted a while ago, is our missionary to Macau. And, and of course, uh, Doc Bu and uh, Doc Laika. Yeah. Ginawa na rin kita ng doctor, no? They are also our missionaries to Kazakhstan and they also have good news later, no? I share nila yan sa inyo. Excited. I'm sure gusto niyo sumama sa church plant na pupuntahan nila kasi exciting talaga doon, no? And um, getting back to the spirit, you know, we this is who we are from the beginning until today, and this is who we will always be. And as we talk about the Word of God today, we are actually studying a song that is um, Psalm 65, and this is a song of David. And the title of this psalm is, O God of Our Salvation. And he gives us a picture of what it is for him as he knows who his God is. Psalm 65, verse 1 to 8. Let me read that. Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you chose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple, by awesome deeds, you answer us with righteousness, O God, of our salvation, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, the one who is by his strength established the mountains, being girded with the might, who stills the roaring of seas and the roaring of their waves, the tumult of the people, so that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout 
for joy. And this is the word of God as we talk about the ends of the earth. You know, this is a song, as I've said, sung by David, and it's actually a song that is sung during a celebration. Most probably, it is sung during the, the season of harvest. Pagaani na sila, no? It, it's actually a reminder of God's faithfulness. If you have, um, how many of you are plantitos and plantitas? Meron bang mga natuto magplant dito? What? Yeah, no, we are two. Yeah, actually, ito, hindi na to plantito si Tito Rico, master, ano na to eh? Hardinero, no? Yung mga, binib- yung mga pinaplant niya, yung mga, yung ano tawag doon? Dahon. Parang pamahipay, no? You know, when you plant, we know this, that we water it, we put the seed, we water it, but we know also that it's not up to us for it to grow. It needs what? It needs sunlight, you know? And just like that, no, as the people of God celebrate this song, it's actually a reminder that even though they are faithful in planting, in watering, they know that it is only God who can make things grow. And so it is a declaration of the faithfulness of God. And this is, I like you to see verse 1. It says, praise is due to you, O God. It's a thanksgiving to the holy and mighty, all-powerful God. It's a De- ano, ano, a lot of the songs today are about us. No? Napansin niyo ba yun? The songs that we sing now are about us, not the worship songs. Because it elevates who we are, what we feel, and that's all good. But at the same time, there are songs that remove us from the picture. Worship songs will allow us to go back to who is really in charge. It says, praise is due to you, O God. Verse 6, the one who is by his strength established the mountains. He talks about the account of creation, the one who is all-powerful, who created everything. And we know this, David's declaration, that there is an all-powerful God of all the ends of the earth and to the farthest seas. This is his emphasis in this song. Imagine, no? During those times, the King David's time, they were the chosen people. But at the same time, he knows that yes, he is my God, sabi ni David, but I know he is also the God of all. Even the people who don't know God, he is still the God of all. This Yahweh is the one who is the God of all. And that is comforting. Because we have to accept this fact that the God that we worship is also the God of those who don't know Him yet. Minsan, no, we feel like we live in this bubble na nandito na lang tayo. We move in the circles of God's people. And that's why sometimes when we pray for others, ang question natin is, maririnig kaya ni Lord yung prayer? Eh, hindi naman niya kilala si Lord. When our office mates would go to us and ask us, pag-pray mo naman ako, and sometimes we respond, pagpe-pray kita, pero hindi mo naman, dapat kilala mo muna si Lord. And I'd like us to talk about this word because this is actually an assurance that our God is also their God. That our prayer is one day, they will also declare that He is their God. Ito po ang ating pinagdadasal. No? Yesterday, I was with a few kids. We were going through Purple Book. And as you know, no high schoolers, uh, new believers, I was asking them, do you have two, all of us have two, two sets of friends. Alam nyo ba yun? Meron tayong two sets of friends. Reality to. Meron tayong church friends. So meron ba kayong church friends? Sabi ng iba, wala pa. But I pray that magkaroon kayo. No, we live in this bubble that we have church friends. These are all, I have friends. But there are also friends who don't know Jesus. And a lot of us grew up this way. Ang dami ko pong kaibigan. No? Makaibigan po ako, mabarkada po ako. Kung pwede ko lang kayong i-add lahat sa Facebook, gagawin ko. No? Ganun to by nature. And a lot of times we think that we cannot spend time with these friends anymore. We can only spend time with these friends. What's my point? I was encouraging the kids. The goal is to have one set of friends. Paano? That all will come to know Christ. That we will bring these people to the saving knowledge of Christ. And as we get into the word, no, as we have that image of God is the God of the ends of the earth, no matter how far, the Lord is still in reach. No? And so, 
just a few things that I want to uh, talk about, the description of the nature of God according to David. In verse 2, he says, O you, o you, you who hear prayers, to you shall all flesh come. And so the question is, are we listening? No? That is the most common question my wife asks. <laughs> Natanong naman, sino yung mga mister dito na tinanong kayo recently, kagabi lang? No? Nakikinig ka ba? Meron bang gano'n? Lord, ako lang talaga ang masamang klaseng husband dito. No? Mababait po talaga lahat ng tao. Ito si Charles, alam ko, mabait talaga. Ayan, natataw. ba? Parang kagabi, no, I was doing something. And what am I doing? I was on Facebook. No? May sinabi si Pam once. Okay. Two. Third. Saya, nakikinig ka ba? Oh! There are times, <laughs> nakakonsensya ako. There are times, no, meron siyang trick question. Ano sinabi ko? Ha? Huh? Grabe, dinadoubt mo yung... Ano ka sinabi ko? Grabe ka, dinadoubt mo. Sinabi... Ano ka sinabi ko? Grabe ka, wala kang tiwala sa akin. Hindi <laughs> ko talaga narinig. No? Parang gumagan. Meron bang ganon? Meron? Mm, okay. ba? Lahat tayo, no? And I like that when we go to church, we intently listen to the Lord. But at the same time, there are a lot of distractions. No? Sometimes it's the phone, it's in, in, you know, so we are all distracted. Listening. And for those who are married, you will really understand that listening is beyond the words. Actually, it's also the body language that we do. No? Galit ka? Hindi oh. That's listening. And you know, if there's something that I've noticed in this day and age, social media is actually an indicator that a lot of people want to be listened to cries for help, a rant, a post, a tweet. So if you have Twitter, please follow Pastor Bojo. <laughs> Everyone has something to say. Yan po ang reality ng mundo natin. We all have something to say. And everyone has an opinion, everyone has a concern, and everyone has feelings, right? The problem is, it's a very noisy world. Sabay-sabay po lahat nagsasalita. We don't know how it works. Some choose to voice it out. So, nangyari, palakasan ng boses. And some to just choose to keep quiet. Hindi lang magsasalita. But this is the reality. Everyone wants to be heard. I want to be heard. Especially with my concerns. But I want to encourage you today. If you feel like nobody is listening, if you feel like nobody is concerned about what's on your mind, the Bible says, Oh Lord, you hear us. And I'd like to encourage you, the Lord doesn't just hear prayers. The Lord hears everything. Ganon si Lord, no? And that's His ability to be present everywhere. He hears all the small things and all the big things. He hears all the concerns and He knows it all. And that is the truth. Our cries for help, God hears that. Our desperation, God knows that. Even though you don't say it verbally. Alam niyo ba yun? Pag iniisip pa lang ng mind niyo, no? alam na ni Lord yun. God knows. And that is very important for us to acknowledge. I hope you know that. No, This is the, one of the basic natures of the Lord. He knows and He hears everything. God hears. He says, to you shall all flesh come, the second part of verse 2. And this is an amazing truth about God. God hears us even though if we don't know Him yet. Naririnig tayo ni Lord and He brings us to Him closely. Um, let me tell you a story of um, when I got saved. No? And I guess this is most of our stories. Lahat po tayo ganito ang storya pagka tinanggap na natin si Lord when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So whenever we tell that story, we would say, one day I encountered him, I was in a preaching, and I heard the word, and I knew that God was talking to me, and I invited him into my life. May ganun ba yung story niyo? Sino sa inyo ganun ang story niyo? Raise your hand. Lord, hindi ko na alam ko ano nangyari today. <laughs> okay lang, secure ako. Kahit dalawa lang kayo, okay lang. But I guess that's the truth now. We invite God. Tama ba? Is that right? Yes. Louder. Is that right? Do you invite God to come to your life? Yes, okay. But the reality, it's wrong. Sabi nyo, kaya ayokong sumasagot eh. 
si Pastor, ang labo ka usap. Eh. And so, the concept of inviting God in our lives is the reality that we know, Lord, I invite you, I want you to be my Lord and Savior. But you have to understand, when the Bible says, to you shall all flesh come, it is God who draws us in. It is God who invites us first. And so in my desperation in looking for a Savior during the time when I met Christ in 2021, 2020, ay, 2000, in 2001, the day that I invited Christ in 2001, He actually invited me to Him way, way before that. It's God who draws us close. The groans of our heart without saying, Lord, help me. You know, there are a lot of times before meeting Christ, ganito ang mga groans ng buhay natin. Ayoko na mangyari sa akin to. Sana makaalis ako sa sitwasyon na to. In those prayers, even without undressing God, God knows what you need. God is drawing us close. And that's the power of God. And that's comforting because no matter how far we feel like God is, He hears us and He draws us near to us. Yan po ang katotohanan no, ng salita ng Panginoon. He brings us close because He hears us. And so, I want to say this. We have a God who hears us. If there's one thing that I want you to take home, three out of one, no, is this. God hears us. And if you look at the Hebrew word that is used, it's called, it, the word is sama. Say that with me. Sama. Oh. Look at the person to your right. Say mo sa kanya, sama. Yeah. Oh, look at the person to your left. Say mo, sama mo. No, sing sabihin, you hear me on, no? Sama. What does it mean? I like that Hebrew word because it's more than hearing. Sabi niya, sama means hearing with follow up, acting on what is heard. And this is who our God is. When he hears, he does something about it. Tell that person, sama. Ayan. May nanutunan na kayo ngayon, no? Pag kinausap kayo ng mga mister nyo, tapos, nakikinig ka ba? Sama mo. Ganun, no? Sama. Encouragement, no? I want to encourage everyone, there is no distance too far that God won't hear you. No? You might feel like you're far today. God hears and God is about to do something. Uh, my devotion this morning, I just added this, no? so I guess it's not in the keynote. My devotion today was, uh, was in Psalms 116, verse 1 to 2. And the psalm says, I love you, Lord. And so, nastak ako dun, no? from that first statement, I love you, Lord. So, the question is, why do we love God? And it's actually connected to hearing. It says, I love the Lord because He heard, He has heard my voice and my pleas for mercy. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. Wow. Lord, I love you because you always hear and you're acting upon it. We will love you as long as we live. The other day we, were, we had a consult, me and my wife. And I guess the, the speaker going to us, it was virtual. The speaker going to us was loud. Naririnig namin siya. Pero pag kami pala nagsasalita, mahina yung dating namin sa kanya. And because it's a monitor, nakitang-kita ko gumanon siya. Oh. So nakita ko kung malinis yung tenga niya. Ganong kalapit. Ano yun? Sabi yung ganon. No, sabi. Huh? And it gave me actually a picture that whenever we say something, God is always inclined to hear. So that He could really listen to what's happening. And that's what David was declaring. Lord, you hear. You hear me. You hear all of us. And you're inclined to do something about it. And so, as he hears us, well, as you continue, it says, verse 3, when our iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. When our sin wins against us, the Bible says, we are forgiven by God. Imagine that. And that is... His declaration that the Lord we have is our Savior. Iniquities or sin, we can never, never win against. A lot of times we feel like there's a balance sheet in our lives. Oh, I did wrong today. 
I need to do something right so that I can balance it out. The truth is, we will always be in the losing end. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And we are all sinners. Now, if there's one thing that God sees in us that we are all equal, regardless if they know Jesus or not, it's that we are all sinners. The other day, I was, I've been really focusing a lot of time in learning who Queen Elizabeth is. Mara bang nag YouTube ngayon lately because of her passing. No? Parang, the other day, I was learning about why is it called Queen of, uh, Prince of Wales. So, sabi ko yung mga Wales ba? Mag, ano, or sa, so, part pa lang. Anyway, so I've been learning a lot about um, Queen, the royal family, the monarch. I was so amazed. And the reason why I'm sharing this is we can learn so much about someone, but unless we know that person personally, that's different, right? Pag kilala mo talaga yung queen, iba. But nevertheless, God knows us. We might not know him. There are, you know, there are countries that don't know and don't have an idea of who Jesus is. A good example actually is Macau. When we were there, we had a briefing. One of the pastors there was saying, uh, alam mo dito, pag sinay mong, ano, can I share Jesus to you? There were feedback or replies that, ano yun? What is that? No? Is that a burger? As in alien ang Jesus sa kanila. We live in a world where we know Jesus. And it's different to have a personal relationship with him. But this is reality. Regardless if we know him or not, one thing that equalizes all humans is this, that we are all sinful. Yan po ang common denominator natin. And this is the good news that when sin overcomes one person, which is the reality of life, God is willing to save those who will respond. And so the second thing I want to say is this. We have a God who saves. Ito yung all-powerful God na sinasabi ni David na kinakanta niya during this celebration. That God hears and God saves. This is His nature. No exemption. No? Thank God. No matter how dark your past is, God is willing to save. No matter how far you feel today, from God, God is here to save just like today, no, there's a storm that is coming in. No? May papasok daw na bagyo. And we always hear this, no? P-A-R. Do you know what P-A-R is? P-A-R means? Philippine Area of Responsibility. No? What does that mean? Ibig sabihin, paglabas niyan, hindi na natin responsibilidad. Di ba? That's what it means. Tama ba? I guess, no? Parang once it's out of the Philippine area of responsibility, we don't have any, you know, wala na. It's their problem. Ganun. But in God's terms, He will always be responsible for us. No? Regardless of where you are in this world. And so, ang question na lang sa atin is, how is our internal radar when it comes to salvation for others? A lot of times, we feel like there are people who are not mali ata yung English ko no yung hindi na kayang ma-save ni Lord meron ba kayong ay Lord hindi mo na itong kaibigan ko imposible na tong ma-save eh. kasi iba na to eh no? ibang klase to dapat hindi na hindi imposible na tong ma-save I had mindsets like that even for people close to me yung ay grabe kasi ginawa nito Lord hindi na to hindi na talaga but I guess that's our image of who God is. But the right image of God is no one is far from the Lord that He cannot save. If we are here, then God say, can save everyone. No? Look at the person to your right. No? Look at the person to your left. No? Mukha bang dapat isave? No. Ng upuan? We are all not too far from God to hear and not too sinful for God to save. Amen? He says, By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our Savior. And that's verse 5. Awesome deeds. When God moves in our lives, not only can He save us, 
from our sin, but He can actually save us in situations in our lives. Pag sinabing awesome deeds, no, you will know that it is only God who can do something. And so let me tell you a story about Nadir. You know, Nadir is, and, and I, I, I actually am excited to share this because I met this man. No? He actually attended this one of the services here that I was preaching at, it was the five o'clock or 7 p.m. It, I used to preach at that time. No? And so this is Nadir, the one in the red box. Um, if you know Bishop Ferdy, Bishop Ferdy is, all, all, I think, taller than me a little. And so Nadir is around 5'9". It's a tall guy, big guy, uh, Muslim. No? And to be honest, when I saw him when I was preaching, I got scared. Natakot po ako when I was preaching. No? Parang, tas nandun lang siya. Kita nyo, di ba, haba nung balbas ni Nadir. No? Parang si Big D, bro. <laughs> Hi, bro. No, parang, it, I, I saw him from this, he was there. And so, but I continued preaching. And so I thought he was just visiting. No? A Muslim guy, you know that um, very big stature guy. But you know what? One day, when I saw him, I saw him in class in our school, no? Every Nation. I mean, I watched your preaching. He was already studying in the School of World Missions. He got saved in Victory Ortigas. Uh, one of the leaders actually just approached him. He was only here in the Philippines for business. He was here for a very short time. Somebody actually preached the gospel to Nadir. Uh, from a very restricted Muslim nation, there are only few. Huh? Teka lang. Ne, tama. Oh. Yeah. So, it's from a very restricted nation. As in, if I could describe the nation, pag narinig yung word na Jesus, ganun. No? Talagang um, life and death tong situation. Okay? So, this man, as I've said, no, he actually read the Bible in two months, got baptized. And after his one year here, in, or two years in the Philippines, they now flew back to the nation, that Muslim nation that he was in. No? And so he planted the church there. He preached the gospel. All his family is now Christians. And this now gets interesting. This is actually a continuation of this story. So he now has... Eight house churches in that in that nation, no? and two of those were started only this year. And so this is really a moving story. And so this is what happened. Nadir actually preached to an engineer. Meron siyang na preach na engineer who lives in a city that was a very relevant city, that where they can actually um, plant a new church. So very strategic. So isipin niyo na lang that city is San Juan. Sabi niya, I need to start a church there. No, a house church there. And so he met this engineer, he preached the gospel. After he preached the gospel, he received yung guy. And so, sabi niya, I'll visit you so that I can help you establish your house church. So he now flew his family to this nation, San Juan. Let's just call it San Juan. And unfortunately, he got a call from this friend, this engineer. He said, sorry, I cannot meet you. Hindi ko po kayo kaila pwedeng i-meet kasi... Nagtagalog actually, no? Sabi niya, hindi ko po kayo pwede i-meet kasi I'm stuck at work. So sabi niya, Lord, if you brought me to a place, I know there is always a harvest. That was the story that he, that was the word that he was holding on. Sabi niya, dahil tinadala mo ko dito, this trip will not be, um, may result to, may fruit tong trip na to. So, what he did, he actually just hired a tour guide to bring his family around. For the next few days, they were stuck there. Hindi talaga pwede yung engineer. And so what he did, he actually preached the gospel to this tourist guide. Every day, pag lumabas sila, dinala sila sa green hills, pati sa mga bag. Alam mo ba, si Lord, hindi bumibili ng fake. Ganon. Pinipreachan niya. Tapos, dinala sa, ano, sa, ano nga yun? Yung Chinese restaurant. Ano ba itong utak ko ngayon, Lord? May bagyo ba? Gloria, di ba? Sabi niya, alam mo, yung Gloria, yung pangalan na Gloria, galing yun sa glory of God. So lahat, pasok. Preach niya, gano'n. Pinipreach niya, gano'n. So every day, he was preaching to this tourist guide. And then, on the last day, this is what the, pre the tourist guide said. Sabi niya, don't you know that what you are doing is dangerous? Do you know that you can be jailed? 
Do you know that your whole family can be endangered? Approaching anyone and sharing about Jesus. What if you met a dangerous person who brought you to the authorities? Ganon yung English niya. No? And so, this is actually a conversation of this. Sabi hindi mo ba alam? Nagtagalog ulit, no? Para sure. Hindi mo ba alam na pwede kang mamatay yung pamilya mo, kasama mo, ganon ganon And this is the, the reply, no? This is what he said. I don't approach anyone. I approach only those whom God leads me to because I know He already prepared them to hear His message and they are not dangerous people. Are you a dangerous person? He asked. And he asked again, Are you going to tell the authorities what I'm doing? Hindi naman daw umimik. And that's why God led me to share this with you. Are you going to accept this message? And that was his last question. You know, on that day, where he dropped they, the tour guide dropped them off in the airport he actually received Jesus Christ you know? and amazing this man who is now the pastor of that nation to preach who Jesus is sabi niya i will go back and meet you and establish that home church you know home churches are just homes open to preaching the gospel kakain pa preach and then they will go. A very simple. Hindi po ganito ang itsura ng church. But guess what? No matter how small the home is, no matter where they meet, this is the assurance. God hears them. And God saves those who respond. Why? Because God is the only hope that they have. Amen? That is the story of Nadir. That's why in verse 5 it says, By awesome deeds you answer us with righteousness, O God of our salvation. This is the God that we have, the one who saves. The God who saved this man in the past will do amazing things as he do, does the work of God. Our God is the hope of all. In verse 5 it says, The hope of all, the ends of the earth, and of the farthest seas. You know, the world we live in, again, no, I want to say this. God knows that the world we live in, we know His Son, Jesus. Kahit saan ka lumabas, kilala nila si Lord. They can say, oh, kilala ko si Jesus. Nakikita nila sa church. Sometimes they call Him bro, you know. But it's God's heart to lead us to Him. No? Dinadala niya tayo through His Son so that we can actually live our lives in knowing that He is the awesome God. The God who hears that, and the God who saves. The reason why God is like this, because He is the hope that we all need. No? And so I want you to see this picture. Mas marami pa pong taong walang idea kung sino si Lord. There are so many people who don't have an idea of who Jesus is. And that's why it's very important for us to continue the work. Ito po tayo lahat. This is who we are as a people of God. No, In this movement, in this church, we are people who believe in this. No, We send people to the mission field so that they can preach the gospel. Before I call on Boo and I want him to share a story, um, one of the books that I always hold on to when it comes to uh, the mission field. It's a book entitled The Human Right. No, it's written by Rice Brooks, one of the missionaries who visited us here in the Philippines in 1984. And the thesis of this book says, the basic human right is, this is the truth that everyone has the right to know. Everyone has the right to know, regardless of where you live or what your belief is. And this is that right to know God, to know Jesus, and make Him known. That is our mission no? in our community, also in other. Again, as we preached about this song of David, that the God that we have hears and saves, it actually means we have a God of hope. May pag-asa kahit sino. And that's why we have the work. No? Alam nyo, ang plan A ni Lord, is to use his children to share that hope. Tayo po yun, no? And let me give you a picture of what will happen. Matthew 24, verse 14. I'm going to end here. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. 
a lot of people are asking, especially mga 2020. Ano na ba? Um, end of the world na ba? You remember that season, 2020? A lot of people were so consumed about the end. And this would always be my reply. The Bible says, when we have done the work and then the end will come, we still need to continually preach the gospel because a lot of people still don't know Christ. Just like the one who preached kay Nadir, hindi naman po siya pumunta dun sa nation na yon. But he actually preached to Nadir and now he is there in his nation. So we all have a role to play. Amen? As we ask the worship team, we're gonna worship and then we will also pray. No? And this is my three applications no? in this preaching. Number one, we are all called to pray. And pray. Pray for a nation. No? Commit to pray for a nation. Now, if you want to continually pray for um, Kazakhstan, we have missionaries in uh, Macau. We also have missionaries. We've sent one to Australia from our church in Green Hills. Continue to pray. And that's why it's nice to have a reminder of a nation that you can pray for. Siguro sa inyo ngayon, pray nyo, Korea. Basta tama yung prayer, no? Kasi minsan, Lord, I pray for this nation. Sana makapunta ako sa concert. <laughs> Parang lumalayo dun sa ano. No, let's pray that the kingdom of God will come in that nation. Amen? And that He will use His children to preach the good news. So, if you are reminded of Boo and Laika, continually pray for them. You can actually message them in Facebook. Just encourage them in the work that they are doing. And then second, we can actually give. As a mission-sending church, we also support no, financially. And so, if God has impressed in your heart to support our missions, we will also have that next week. We can have that opportunity to give. And the last one is, of course, go. Pray, give, and go. No? If God has spoken to you to be part of a mission, no? pag pray niyo yan, talk to us. We can walk with you. It's not instant. Uh, I, I believe for Bu and Laika, it's been years no? before it came to pass. But they held on to that word that they will be one day be sent out to a different nation. And so, as we conclude our preaching today, I just want to pray for everyone. Can I ask everyone to stand? Again, we will have time to pray in a bit. No, Pray for three nations. But before that, I just want to minister to everyone. As we just close our eyes and allow God, allow His Spirit to be with us today. Lord, thank you for reminding all of us. Yes, we are inspired with the stories of what you are doing in other people, in other nations. But Lord, thank you for reminding us that you hear us. Naririnig mo kami, Lord. And so, Lord, in that truth, in that word, today, Lord God, we just want to be silent before you. We just want to be silent in front of you. We may not shout it, we might not utter it, but Lord, in the words from our minds to our hearts, Lord, hear our prayers today. Church, Speak to God. Let's just take this moment of silence. Just speak to Him. Because God is reminding you, Anak, I hear you. Speak to Him about your concerns in business. Speak to Him about your concerns in your relationship, in your finances, in your career, in something that feels like parang it's dying, at an area of your life that seems like it's not fruitful, it's not growing. Speak to God today. Let's just take this moment of silence as we personally take time to say, Lord, hear my prayer. Oh, hi guys! Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us, whatever. Just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. God bless you.